Bible to Judges chapter 13. Judges 13, we're going to look at the whole chapter. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. That was a, there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God, very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Then the woman ran in haste and told her husband, and said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. So Manoah arose and followed his wife. And when he came to the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let your words come to pass. What will be the boy's rule of life and his work? So the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. She may not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor may she drink wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please let us detain you, and we will prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you offer a burnt offering, you must offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know he was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name, that when your words come to pass we may honor you? And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And he did a wondrous thing while Manoah and his wife looked on. It happened as the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground. When the angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and his wife, then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had desired to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands, nor would he have shown us all these things, nor would he have told us such things as these at this time. So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon him at Manea Dan between Zorah and Eshtol. Now last week I shared with you that uh, Japheth was faithful to the promise of the, to his promise that he made to the Lord and that he had judged Israel for eight years. Then three godly men came after him and served and judged Israel for another 23 years. So they had godly leadership for 31 years after God told them in last Sunday's message that he was done with them. Uh, but that God allowed them to have godly leadership for 31 more years. It's easy to fall away and fall away from God when we don't have godly leadership or uh, when we're... Uh, hanging around with the ungodly people. Uh, so we want to be careful what we're doing with our life. Uh, we want to make sure that all that we're doing is honoring God and we're pursuing God with our whole heart. Uh, and when we have godly people leading us 
and when we have godly friends and people that we're hanging around with, it makes it much easier to honor God with our lives. It, it makes us able to uh, endure all that this world can throw at us. But when we're hanging around ungodly people doing ungodly things, and, and when we slack off on honoring God with our life, then it begins to open up the door for us to live ungodly lives and to fall into those traps that the devil will set for us. So staying true and, and to God and following him all the days of your life and obedience, that's called faith. That's just called being faithful. And we've all heard the stories about Samson and his great strength, but today I wanted to stop and I want to look at the life of his parents, Manoah and his wife. And, you know, Israel was being disobedient to the Lord. They were, they were following the, the lies from the devil again. And it just, they fell into that same old trap that all of Israel just keeps doing. They keep falling into that trap and dishonoring God. Uh, but despite what everybody else was doing, Manoah and his wife, they were living to honor God. Uh, they were living their lives to do everything to please the Lord and to stay obedient and faithful to His Word. Uh, you've all heard the question that if somebody were to jump off of a bridge, would you follow and jump after them? And uh, I can tell you, before I got saved, uh, I wasn't a follower. I was the leader. Uh, I remember one time when I was a young kid, probably about 10 years old, we had a bunch of rain in our, in our area. The creek that was behind the house, it flooded, and it was more like a raging river than a creek. And we had a little bridge that went over it, and, and all the kids in the neighborhood, they were back there, and everybody was wanting to jump in, but everybody was too scared. Well, guess who led the charge to jump into the creek? Uh, some young kid uh, jumped off, and then everybody started following me. And what we found that after the water all receded, that there was this big rock right where we were jumping, and any one of us could have jumped in and dove and hit our head on that. So, uh, but anyway, I was the one that led the charge in that. Uh, before I got saved again, uh, we had a group of guys at work that, that I led and got them all excited about going parachuting one day, and, and I led them in jumping out of an airplane. Uh, yeah, that's what I was doing lead people to do the wrong things, to do some crazy things. Now these are just a couple examples of, of jumping out and jumping into something that maybe is a, a scary situation or an unknown situation, uh, but the saying still goes that if somebody was to jump off a bridge or go down the wrong path in life, would you follow them? I can remember as, as a young teenager there was some friends of mine that were getting involved in drugs and they were trying to lead me down that path and I said I, I don't want no part of that and I backed away from them in that area of my life. So if somebody's asking you to go down the wrong path in life, are you going to listen to them and are you going to follow them down that path? Uh, we we want to make sure that we are wise enough to decline those times when people are trying to lead us away from God. And we want to be sure that we're following God with our whole heart. So let's look back at Manoah and his wife and see what happens to the faithful people that follow God. Uh, so let's look at 2 through 7. Now there was a certain man from Zorah, uh, the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God, very awesome. But I did not ask him what it, where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. The angel of the Lord told them that they would have a child, and this child would begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines, uh, uh, their enemies. They were being blessed by God for their faithfulness to the Lord. 
Now, sometimes God can bless us financially. I know I've been uh, blessed financially uh, several times in my uh, life as a Christian uh, where God has taken care of me in some matters. Uh, but usually God does something much different in our life other than financial blessings. Uh, Adrian Rogers in his book, 10 Secrets for a Successful Family, wrote this. J. Paul Getty was one of the richest men who ever lived. You wouldn't expect him to be envious of anyone. But Getty once said that he was envious of those who knew how to make marriage work and to be happy in marriage. And Getty knew whereof he spoke because his record was five marriages and five divorces. If you have a happy home, you're rich, you are blessed. Now we've got a, a flood of preachers out there that are preaching the health and wealth gospel. And I can tell you that I am certainly not one of them. Uh, in fact, most of the scriptures that I have read goes in uh, direct opposition to the health and wealth gospel. You see, most of the followers of Jesus, they were broke, they were tired, and they were sick. They were mistreated. Life had beat them down tremendously. The Bible teaches us to be a blessing to others. It teaches us to make sacrifices for the gospel. It teaches us to be content in life no matter what comes our way. So why would we ever listen to the health and wealth gospel preaching that is out there? Where they say, if your faith would just be a little bit bigger, then this would happen for you. That's not the gospel that I know. The God I know, he's going to meet our needs. And he's not here to fatten our bank accounts. Now, in verses 8 through 14, I won't reread them, but the angel of the Lord tells Manoah basically the same thing that he just got through telling his wife earlier. And uh, what the angel of the Lord told him was that Samson's mom couldn't have anything impure in her life because it would affect his life. God wants us to live our lives free, uh, free from sin, too. Uh, why should we live pure lives? Because it's hard to stay on the right path when you're out doing sinful things. Just like I said earlier, when you're hanging with the wrong people, doing the wrong things, you're going to get further and further away from God. So God wants us to live pure lives as well. Now, uh, Manoah listened to what the angel had told him, and then he wanted to honor him uh, with some food. Look at verses uh, 15 through 22 again. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, Please, let us detain you, and we will prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you offer a burnt offering, you must offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know he was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? That when your words come to pass, we may honor you. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful? So Manoah took the young goat with the grain offering and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And he did a wondrous thing while Manoah and his wife looked on. It happened as the flame went up toward heaven from the altar. The angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of, of, of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground. When the angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and his wife, then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. You see, Manoah wanted to honor the angel of the Lord with some food. Uh, but the angel told him instead to offer it to the Lord. And then when Manoah asked the angel what his name was, he said, It's not for you to know right now what my name is. It's too wonderful. It's, it's not there for you to comprehend at this moment, is what he was saying. And we need to make sure that we do everything in our power to honor God and not man. Uh, from today in the Word, August of 1991, John the III, King of Poland in the late 17th century, is best remembered as the man who saved Central Europe from invading armies of Turks in 1683. With the Turks at the walls of Vienna, Sobiski led a charge that broke the siege. His rescue of Vienna is considered one of the decisive battles in European history. 
In announcing his great victory, the king paraphrased the famous words of Caesar by saying simply, I came, I saw, and God conquered. Now we know that Caesar said, I came, I saw, and I conquered, but uh, King Sobiski said, God conquered. He gave God the credit for the victory in the battle. And the angel was making sure that we should be honoring God. But what Manoah did not know at the time that it was in fact the Lord that he was honoring. There are times in the Old Testament scriptures where I believe a pre-incarnate Jesus made an appearance. Jesus explained those times to the two disciples when they walked on the road to Emmaus. And for us, the, the two disciples did not record what Jesus told them about all the times in the Old Testament where he made that appearance. So we don't have that record. Uh, but although those times were not recorded, uh, I believe this was one of those times when Jesus made an appearance. Manoah thought that they were going to die because they had seen God in physical form. Now, I've looked at all the commentaries. I've, I've prayed and asked the Lord to give me uh, clarity about this encounter. I wanted him to give me the wisdom to make sure I was correct. And what I see in the scriptures is that, is that this was Jesus that Manoah and his wife had met. And, uh, and there's a couple of things that, that helped to open up my eyes. First of all, they offered him food. Now, food would only go to a person with a physical body, so it couldn't have been an angel. It had to be Jesus. And then second, Manoah thought that they were going to die because they had seen God in physical form. Now, Manoah, obviously, he was a man of God. He, he knew all the... The scriptures, he knew the story about Moses and what God had said to him. When God said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock and I'm going to cover you with my hand and I'm going to walk past you and because you cannot see my face if anybody sees my face. And in Exodus 33, 20, he said, but you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. So Manoah knew this scripture. He knew the story about that in his life. And he thought because they had seen God, he was going to to die. Uh, so how did they see God and live is the question. Well, you see, they didn't see God in all of his glory. They didn't see the glory of the Trinity. They only saw a physical manifestation of Jesus Christ. And that's why they didn't die, because they, they wasn't in God's whole presence. You see, Manoah knew the word of God. But it was his wife was the one that had the understanding of the scriptures. She had the rational thought between the two of them. Look at verses 23 through 25. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had desired to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands, nor would he have shown us all these things, nor would he have told us such things as these at this time. So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon him at Manah Dan, between Zorah and Eshtol. She rationalized that the Lord would not visit them, deliver a promise to them, tell them about all that's going to happen. They're going to have a son, uh, and then turn around and kill them, and by doing so, negate the promise that he had just made to them. So she, she rationally thought things out and explained it to Manoah. Now sometimes we can, we can uh, remember scriptures or we can get the scriptures a little mixed up and we can forget what they mean. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and hope. In Romans 8, 37, Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. You see, we can forget that God is for us. We can forget that we are conquerors in this world, that we can go out and take over the ungodliness that is going on all around us. Whatever this world is trying to throw at us is really irrelevant to anything that God has to say. God has good plans for our lives. I should say anything that the devil has to say. God has good plans for our life in this world. But this world is, is not our home. Just as, 
as God told Manoah and his wife that he would deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines, God has told us that he would deliver us out of the hands of the devil and give us victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. When it gets right down to it, we're talking about the Lord Jesus visiting Manoah and his wife. When it gets right down to it, the Lord Jesus visited us on the day of salvation. When we turned our life over to him, Jesus came into our heart and we yielded our lives over to him. You see, he showed us the promise of deliverance if we would just uh, give ourselves to him. He would rescue us from hell. And if you are saved, then you know that full well. You know all the, all the word of God has to say. We are saved and we've got a home in heaven and it's a wonderful place and we're going to be there one day. We can trust in that promise. But if we're not saved, if we don't understand that, then we need to make things right. We need to get it right now. Because I'm telling you, I can look at the world going on around us and I can tell you we're getting darker and darker each day. Time is running out. And, and there's going to be some people that waited until the last minute to get their life right with God. And they're going to find out that they missed out on the eternity with Jesus. We need to be living our lives fully for God. We need to honor Him in everything that we say and do. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for Your Word today. We thank You for Your faithfulness uh, to come and, and enter into our lives and, and reveal truth to us. Father, we thank You for Your Spirit that You've given us to understand what truth is and that You're with us. And God, I pray that You would help us to live our life to honor you. God, if there's anybody in this world that's worthy of worship, it's you. You have given us so much. You have blessed us with so much. You have loved us so much. Why would we not want to honor you? God, you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. And if we're falling short in any areas of our life, God, help us to get that back on track that we might honor and worship you the way that you deserve. God, I thank you for your love and your mercy that has set us free from the prison of hell. Thank you for Jesus for taking away the punishment that we should have faced so that we can have an eternal life with you in your glory and in your kingdom. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.